The demise of television is greatly overstated. I worked in television for 20 years. I think it's an extraordinarily effective medium. Um, I think you're, all, you're seeing a couple things. One is you are seeing a consumer migration to consume content, some of it being television, on digital devices. Uh, and as those eyeballs shift, you're seeing a subsequent shift in advertising dollars. So I think that's number one. Uh, number two, I think on digital platforms, uh, there's more advanced forms of both targeting and measurement. Uh, and I think that's also what's taking some television dollars and migrating that to the digital platforms. What I get really excited about and really encouraged about is the possibility for advanced targeting and measurement within the television ecosystem. Because ultimately I think that will help bring some money back into that ecosystem as well when you could actually quantify the true value of television marketing, not just in delivering an audience, but in driving a real sale, both online and in-store sales. And I think that's where the future of television is actually heading, is greater accountability on a one-to-one -one basis. Uh, listen, I think for, for the television migration um, to digital, uh, part of it is uh, a migration of eyeballs. Uh, part of it is a migration that's based on measurement, you're right. I think it's one of the challenges that mobile's had for so many years, is that mobile has seen a huge influx of new consumers utilizing mobile devices, consuming more content, but the dollars hadn't shifted as quickly because the measurement hadn't caught up. And what you can't measure, marketers are a lot less leer, are a lot more leery around spending more money on. So ultimately, uh, what we can't measure and what we can measure is going to dictate in many ways marketer spends uh, in this world. What gets me excited about television is the newfound ability to start being able to measure television uh, down to the household level. Uh, there's a couple of different measurement technologies for television in the marketplace. There's Nielsen, which is panel-based. There's uh, Rentrack, which is set-top box-based. Uh, and then there's ACR data, automatic content recognition, uh, which is uh, based within the television set manufacturers. It's native to most smart televisions after 2012. Uh, and when you actually open up your television, when you bring it home, uh, the, and you connect that up to your IP address, uh, that ACR technology is actually automatically embedded into that television set. And we're therefore able to actually measure what's being consumed on that television set at any given time. What makes that so remarkable and addressable is the fact that we're actually able to do it uh, based on through the IP address. So we're able to link that television set to a particular household, something that previously had been unable to be done with a lot of the other measurement services out there. So now I know the television and I know the, IP, uh, the household it's linked to through its IP address and I know exactly what's on that television at any given time. So again, it, it provides a huge amount of options for now being able to measure television exposure and link that up to the users that are actually in that household and then see if they went on one of their other connected devices, went to a website, made a purchase, or walked in store and made a purchase. I think the key difference between uh, the data that we utilize in the marketplace and a lot of the other folks that are, that are out there talking about data and big data um, is ours is all one-to-one -one directly linked to a real person. We're not modeling and we're not utilizing any sort of a proxy like cookies. We're directly linking uh, consumption to a real individual, to a real person through the registered users that we have from MySpace, from, from the years of signing up for MySpace, over a billion worldwide. So one of the key differentiators for our platform is we're able to actually deterministically link up media exposure and all of their devices and ad exposure across all linked devices, including mobile, which is extraordinarily hard to measure, back to a real person. And because we're able to link that up to a real person, we're then able to see if that person went in store and made a purchase. So I'll give you a quick example. Uh, say you are, you're going in to make a, a purchase of toothpaste. Right? When you go in and make a uh, purchase of toothpaste, you don't hand them a cookie from your laptop or desktop. You swipe your loyalty card or your credit card, which has some form of PII on it. Now that I actually know that same user online as a registered user, I'm able to marry that information together and be able to say, I know this user was exposed to an ad on this device, and I know if they went into the store and swiped their credit card or used a loyalty card and made a purchase. And that, I found, is really one of the things that the marketers are trying to be able to discern the most, which is digital's exposure and digital's effect on in-store sales. Not just online sales, but in-store sales as well. So if, that, if I had to choose one or two things to, to show to a marketer, it would really be able to tie media exposure to actual sales. Not proxies, not modeling, but on a one-to-one -one basis, this person saw an ad on whatever device, and then they walked into a store and made a purchase.